we have our own political and public commentator, Hilary Kelvert, and she joins us now. Hilary, have you caught up with that case at all? Yeah, and I, I um, don't... I can see that the university ought to be, well, I would encourage them to be, to protect freedom of academics to make comments of various sorts, freedom of academics in general. I can't understand how you connect the somebody's free to make whatever comments they like for them to go and be a wee um, glee club for the government and that somehow the university is responsible for your choices. Uh, that no. seems sort of bizarre. I've, and this is a piece I've lost somewhere. I don't understand why it's the university's problem to protect you, um, when you when you make choices. It's their job to say, yes, well, there's a whole lot of views and that's why we have a university for people to contest views, you know. <coughs> hmm. No, I, I just... I don't get that at all. Um, the interesting thing is that Auckland University also had a... They actually promoted her. Um, they used her and her newfound popularity or infamy, depending on which way you want to look at it, uh, profile um, as, as, as promoting Auckland University. And they did a Q&A with her, um, you know, a question and answer on their, on their sort of Auckland University um, newsletters. Uh, guess what the first question is? You've been a voice of reason over COVID-19. Some of us would disagree with that, but it doesn't matter. Was it hard to be heard through all the Kevins and Karens of Facebook? That was the first question they asked of her, Auckland University. So they already said, basically, there are a whole lot of series of people out there um, who were somehow wrong, and she was right, she was the authority, and that they were idiots, basically, for suggesting yes. that she wasn't right. It, it just and that she struggled to get her voice heard, which was... Yes. I was struggling to not listen to her voice, personally. <laughs> um, you know, it was everywhere. Yeah. Um, I sort of fell on the... And I shouldn't do this, but I sort of fell on the bar of... Um, changing her name, I find that, you know, there used to be a yeah, sort too. of a thing out mm. there, and I'm not saying she's nuts for a moment, I really am not, because she's obviously a clever person, but there used to be a sort of a nutter index out there that said, if you have changed your name other than marriage, if you have, and not on the phone, if you, you know, there was a group of half a dozen things that said, if you, these all apply to you, you're nuts, um, but changing your name other than marriage was one of the basic ones. It, it's a subset of people who are seeking for something that they haven't got in a way that redefining yourself somehow, does that make you different? And calling yourself something that is not spellable or usual, you know, I, I sort of don't quite get it. So I keep thinking of that whenever I see Susie spelt like an Indian score or whatever. Um, I just don't. So, as I say, that's my my bad, I guess. But well, um, in actual fact, um, she she answered that question in that Q and A. They said, "What was the inspiration for your name? Is it a real name?" This is Auckland University asking, and she said, "My name was Susanna, spelled S U S N N A, but everybody called me Susie. When I was a teenager, my best friend was a big fan of the punk rock band Susie and the Banshees. Well, we all know that Susie and the Banshees spelled her name that way. It was obviously an affectation. He started spelling my name that way and it stuck. Bollocks. She spelled her name that way. Yes. That's like, I mean, you know, is she Princess Gaga or something? Exactly. Yeah, I think I'll call myself, exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but I'm tempted it's, it's to just when madness. people say... My pronoun is, I've decided my pronoun is Duchess. <coughs> I mean, you know, why not? Um, What's your pronoun? Duchess. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. I, I mean, it's not a pronoun, but why does that matter? <laughs> Neither is calling somebody um, something that they're not become a pronoun in the normal English sense of the word. Something, if we want to move on, from Susie at all, um, I was going to um, share something of back in the day with adoptions for you. Sure. Can I, just before we move uh, on from Susie, yeah. can I just say, one of the reasons that I, remember I said to you, she makes me slightly uneasy, 
she's not a New Zealander. Um, she was in actual fact raised in South Africa and England. So she's migrated to this country. And I, I don't, I'm not being nasty, but I am saying that if you're raised in another country and another culture and you come to New Zealand and then you start telling New Zealanders what to do, we've got a decade-long tradition of resenting that. Remember all the England trade union officials in the 1960s and 70s? Mm -hmm. New Zealanders hated them because they all spoke with a Geordie or a, a Liverpool accent and we went bloody palms, go back to where you've come from. Uh, maybe it's Some people like the male white Australian Green Party connections. Ah, I suppose that's true, yes. Mm. But I always, I always have a bit of a problem with people t t arriving in this country yeah. and then telling us what to do. Yeah. Just, there's just something about yes, it. I don't, mm. I don't care for it. I don't care for American accents particularly telling us what to do. Oh, that's another one. About you see a lot of those in the Greenie thing. movement. Yeah, that's right. Go back to yeah, America. I think, you know, <coughs> work on a big canvas, why don't you? Somewhere yeah. back where you came from. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, the... Adoption thing, back in the day, um, when I say back in the day, in the, um, when there were quite a few adoptions around, when girls went up north for a while, from our point of view, yeah. they probably went down south for a while from Auckland, um, and then they just came back and nobody talked about it and it turned out they'd been away for six months and stayed somewhere or three months and had a baby and came back and, you know, pretended nothing had happened and some people knew, some people didn't. Um, there was quite a few adoptions, and there was people who didn't have children who adopted other people's quite routinely. There's very few now stranger adoptions, but back then they were quite common. And they had to go to lawyers because there was papers to sign and you had to go to the court and the court would have to approve of it. And there was an affidavit people standardly signed, and the affidavit... Um, what the judge was concerned about is that the people who were wanting to adopt a child um, had enough money to adopt the child. So they talked about their income, yep. you know, that they could afford to have a child. Yep. And they also said, and I enjoy good health. Why you should not only be healthy but enjoy it, I don't know, but that was sort of a standard thing you said about people. And so we wanted children to go into an environment who could afford the extra mouth to feed and who were healthy and therefore likely to still be around when they grew up or something. They yep. didn't want them to be 70 when they adopted them and whatever. So what we were looking for then was a good home, a better home than standardly happened to people who just got born into one because we could choose and we did as a society. Um, Roll forward and people are saying the adoption rules are way out of date and that um, you should have open adoptions and you've moved to the point where the young unmarried girl um, chose from a range of profiles about who she would like her baby to go to. And oh, There was also a religious thing in the old affidavit that would say I prefer my child Catholic if the mother was Catholic or whatever. Um, but there was no attempt to match the deprivation of the mother. There was a specific intent not to. Mm. Um, and Catholic people grabbed hold of um, women who had children with, who, who were Catholic and took, took them off into a nunnery or somewhere and then found them out to a Catholic family. So they grabbed themselves that they could, you could argue on a nice version, stay in the Catholic faith, or you could argue that they got to grab hold of these girls, whether or not they were Catholic, and it was a supply of, uh, of babies for Catholic families who couldn't have children, because, of course, having lots of children was the right thing to do, even if you couldn't. That's right, every sperm is so, sacred. Exactly, but um, this one's arrived, and so you can now be a good Catholic family with a child, even if God didn't provide you with the necessaries. Mm. Um, somehow, we now say that was an old-fashioned and useless and poor way to go, and 
occasionally you get people who say, I was adopted and therefore a bad thing happened, you know, like I was colonised, if you're Māori. Um, but I'm interested to know how many people who are adopted were very happy about it and it worked very well and they were chosen as people who weren't like the ones they'd come from. Yes, you never hear those um, stories, do you? No, but there was a lot of them. Mm. And um, they weren't all damaged by, you know, men and... <coughs> school or scouting environments later and things mm. because they were often very loved um, and it was a um, it was a different system and no one knew you know that they weren't open adoptions um, and that's arguable whether you should be able to at least know something about your genetics and things that so because those have come along differently but we don't com we don't complain and we haven't in New Zealand about the number of overseas adoptions we've had from Eastern Europe people go over there grab no, a baby you're absolutely right orphanage, yeah Russia for home. example yeah we don't hear constant social media crap about Angelina or however you say it Jolie oh yes taking Brad cats Pitt. out of Africa yeah 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 it's just known as, here's my rainbow family, aren't I great? Mm. 